another good day everyone and here we are with the latest update of the Fuzzy News with me, Vanessa. At UN General Assembly, Red Number 36, G20 must not fail. Indonesia addressed the 2020 United Nations General Assembly. Just as its international profile is on the rise, the Southeast Asian country will assume next year the chairmanship in the regional organization, ASEAN. It already holds the temporary presidency of the G20. And so fittingly, Indonesia's Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi called for an urgent action to address food and energy crisis and prevent a fertilizer crisis from happening in the wake of the pandemic. The pandemic teaches us a valuable lesson that no one is safe until everyone is. This lesson shapes the priorities of Indonesia G20 presidency. The whole world is pinning their hope on G20 to be catalyst of global economic recovery, especially for developing countries. G20 must not fail. We cannot let global recovery fall at the mercy of geopolitics. We must act urgently to address food and energy crisis and prevent a fertilizer crisis from happening. Otherwise, billions more people will be at risk, particularly again in developing countries. We also need a new paradigm as we move beyond the recovery. A new paradigm will instill a collective responsibility to attend the, G the 2030 agenda and fight climate change. She went on to say, the whole world is pinning their hopes on G20 to be targets of global economic recovery, especially for developing countries. G20 must not fail. ASEAN will also continue to address seriously the situation in Myanmar. Indonesia is deeply concerned by the military junta's lack of commitment to implement, to implement the five points of consensus. ASEAN must move forward and not be taken hostage by the situation in Myanmar. The support of the international community, in particular the neighboring countries of Myanmar, is very important to bring back democracy in Myanmar. Focusing more regionally, Marsudi said it is very important to bring back democracy in Myanmar. We refuse to be a pawn in a new Cold War. Instead, we actively promote the paradigm of collaboration with all countries. This paradigm will also guide Indonesia chairmanship in ASEAN next year. It is the commitment of Indonesia to forge ASEAN centrality in shaping regional order in the Indo-Pacific, to reinforce ASEAN unity as a locomotive for peace, stability, and prosperity in the region, and to ensure ASEAN matters for our peoples, for the region, and for the world. Myanmar's military leadership assumed control in a February 2021 coup in an attempt to crack down on dissent and maintain control of the country. Her address was in many ways a tribute to an interdependent world. Heavy rains from Typhoon Noru flooded houses in northern Philippines. Philippine authorities rushed to distribute aid to thousands of evacuees after Typhoon Noru made landfall in the capital and northern provinces, leaving at least five dead and many areas flooded. Residents in Bulacan province were seen wading through waste deep waters as some asked for aid like food, water and medicine after floods inundated their homes. Five rescue workers are also killed in Bulacan province, Governor Daniel Fernando told the radio station. This is the worst flooding that has ever happened here in San Miguel. My house in Fort Maligaya has two levels and the water reached the second level. Even our local market is completely submerged. President Ferdinand Marcos ordered supplies to be airlifted and clean-up equipment be provided to most affected communities. 
hanggang bewang ng tao. The water is waist deep in the streets and inside my house. Our belongings are also underwater and destroyed. The water rose during the night while people were asleep. Many cars are also submerged. Uh, Bukod doon, mga maraming sakin na nalubog. Ganyan. The people here need help like food, water and medicine. Noru made landfall as a Category 3 typhoon, but it weakened as it denied. The storm was headed out over the South China Sea and toward Vietnam, according to the State Weather Agency. Typhoon Noru killed six people and devastated neighborhoods in the Philippines. Super Typhoon Noru, which made landfall in the Philippines, brought heavy rain and flooding to multiple places across the country, wreaking havoc in the affected areas. So far, the typhoon has killed at least six people in the country, including five rescue workers. Multiple places in Bulacan province in the Philippines were hit by severe flooding, with Garlang village being one of the most severely affected areas. The stagnant water on the road made it difficult for vehicles and pedestrians to pass, bringing traffic to a standstill. Police officers were seen on site to try to maintain traffic order. Head of Garland Village told China Central Television, CCTV, that the entire village is currently in a state of devastation. The flood in my house reached my shoulders, so I had to move to my child's house. Due to the height difference of the terrain, the floodwaters on the road quickly gushed into nearby neighborhoods, ground floors of some houses have been completely submerged, and many residents had to temporarily move to the road waiting for resettlement. It was more difficult compared to before. The floods before have never been so severe, and the water level rises all the time. In my case, it's difficult to find a place for refuge because there are so many families in the same situation. We do not know where to take our families, where to evacuate because of the rising flood water. The Philippine National Disaster Risk Reduction Committee announced that a total of 84 villages in the country were affected by the disaster, and the government evacuated nearly 79,000 people ahead of the schedule. The typhoon also damaged 16,229 hectares of farmland, causing economic losses of more than 114 million pesos, or about 2.37 million US dollars. After Typhoon Noru passed through the Philippines, Vietnamese authorities were prepared to face for Storm Noru. Vietnamese authorities were racing to prepare for Storm Noru before its forecast to make landfall. Typhoon Noru weakened after passing through the Philippines on the last Sunday night and was headed over the South China Sea towards Vietnam, where authorities were racing to prepare for its arrival. State media VTV reported that the government warned of the threat of Noru, anticipating what it said was one of the biggest typhoons to hit Vietnam in 20 years. Schools have been closed and boat owners were ordered to stay ashore in central provinces, while the government said it was ready to evacuate about a million people if necessary. Footage from state media showed soldiers and people rushing to 45 homes, anchor boats and removing fish farm equipment in provinces along the coastline of central Vietnam. The National Weather Service also warned of heavy rain that will cause flooding and trigger landslide in affected provinces after the storm has passed. Typhoon Noru approaches coast of Vietnam. Airports have been closed. Vietnam imposed a curfew in some areas, forbidding people from leaving their homes local time as Super Typhoon Noru headed towards the coast. Hundreds of flights have been grounded. Primary and secondary schools in Da Nang and other areas of Vietnam have been closed and more than 100,000 people in Da Nang are being evacuated as Noru barrels towards the busy city, with forecasters predicting the storm could be one of the biggest on the record. Now people in Da Nang have brought small fishing boats back to shore. In Da Nang, local residents were preparing for the landfall of the super typhoon with many racing to markets to stock up on food and essentials. Coastal fishermen have returned to port to shelter from the storm. I'm a driver. My team was notified by the city government that from 20 hours on September 27, no motor vehicles or people are allowed to leave their homes. The natural disaster risk level in Da Nang has been lower, the second highest in Vietnam. The airports of Da Nang, Phu Bai, Phu Khat, Pleiku will remain closed until Wednesday noon. 
A Vietnam Airlines spokesperson said all flights departing from these airports will be suspended. Spokeswoman of Chinese Minister of Foreign Affairs says Pacific Ocean, not Japan, trashed for nuclear contaminated water into the sea. China once again urges the Japanese side to stop forcibly discharging the nuclear contaminated water into the sea as the Pacific Ocean is not its trash can, said Foreign Minister Spokeswoman Mao Ning at a press briefing in Beijing. There are many unclear questions about Japan's plan to release the nuclear contaminated water into the sea. It is extremely irresponsible for Japan to willfully and remorselessly press ahead with the plan and build in the pipelines to release the contaminated water into the sea without having properly addressed the legitimate concerns of the international community. Mao made the remarks in response to the Tokyo Electric Power Company's claim that the strontium-90 activity concentration in the contaminated water collected from the Fukushima plant after purification by the Advanced Liquid Processing System, ALPS, is about three times the national standard of Japan. The sea is not Japan's trash can, and the Pacific Ocean is not its sewer. China once again urges the Japanese side to stop forcibly discharging the nuclear contaminated water into the sea, seriously respond to the legitimate concerns of various countries, earnestly fulfill its due international obligations, conduct full consultation with stakeholders, including its neighboring countries and relevant international agencies and find the proper way to dispose of the nuclear contaminated water in a scientific, open, transparent, and safe manner. Miss Grand Myanmar detained by Thai immigration authorities. They told me that they will fight on the street. A Myanmar model who took refuge in Thailand after speaking out against a military coup in her homeland has been blocked from returning to Bangkok. Han Lai, who captured international attention last year with a moving beauty pageant speech calling for urgent help for Myanmar's people during a military crackdown, did not have a valid visa to enter Thailand. The 23-year-old was not being detained and arrangements were being made for her to board a flight out of Thailand the department said in a statement. Now it, it's Sarah Grisil, founder of Thailand Miss Grand International Pageant, who also represents Han Lai, said she had been in the transit area of Bangkok Airport. He said Han Lai was stopped on arrival because she was subject of an Interpol notice. Myanmar has been in crisis since the coup in February last year, triggered protests that the military suppressed with little force and thousands of arrests. The junta's crackdown had multiple targets, from pro-democracy and youth groups to activists, politicians and even celebrities and social media influencers. A spokesperson for Myanmar's ruling military council could not be reached for comment. Interpol did not immediately respond to a request for comment on whether Han Lai was the subject of an Interpol notice. Han Lai was a contestant in the Miss Grand International when videos went viral on social media of her fighting back tears on stage while talking about the bloodshed in Myanmar on a day when more than 140 demonstrators were killed. In an interview with Reuters last year, she said her people will never give up. Han Lai's Instagram postings indicate she has spent most of the past year in Thailand. She was returning to the country on a flight from Vietnam when she was denied entry. Taman Safari Zoo in Indonesia marked fifth anniversary of giant panda's arrival. The Taman Safari Zoo in Bogor of Indonesia on Monday celebrated its fifth anniversary of the arrival of two giant pandas, which witnessed constant enhancing of time-honored friendship between China and Indonesia. China sent Chai Tao and Hu Chun from the southwestern Sichuan province to Indonesia on September 28, 2017, making Indonesia the 16th country to collaborate on giant panda research outside China. Attending the ceremony, Lu Kang, the Chinese ambassador to Indonesia, said the two giant pandas have lived a happy and healthy life in Indonesia for the past five years and they have brought joys to Indonesian people. Giant pandas are seen around the world as the symbols of friendship from the Chinese people. You can see in this zoo that the giant pandas can always bring joys to everyone. Kids and adults all love them. The giant pandas not only bring friendship here, but also bringing important opportunities for China and Indonesia to cooperate in a broader range.
Chinese State Forestry Administration and Indonesian Ministry of Environment and Forestry signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation of Promoting Giant Panda Conservation on August 1, 2016. On the same day, China Wildlife Conservation Association and Taman Safari Indonesia signed a 10-year technical agreement on China-Indonesia cooperation in giant panda conservation and research. Well, thank you for watching. We will see you all again soon. Stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your weekend with your loved ones. Bye.